Hello, everybody, and thank you for joining us. Um, we have the honor of having Dr. Andrea Urso with us for the webinar today at Precisionary. And um, the timing is just perfect because um, not only is Dr. Urso going to speak on precision cut lung slices or PCLS and airway contractility in her research, but our team is also attending the 2023 American Thoracic Society meeting now being held in Washington, D.C. So um, there's a lot of interest for this talk by Dr. Urso, and I just wanted to give a brief introduction to our wonderful speaker. So Dr. Urso's studies have largely focused on different phases of lung disease, including respiratory disease progression, transplantation, and graft rejection. Currently, her chief area of interest is immunometabolism in the context of bacterial pneumonias and cystic fibrosis, which also eventually leads to lung transplantation. Pharmacological testing as well as mechanical responses are challenging to study in the human lung. So Dr. Ursa will talk about how the use of precision cut lung slices or PCLS has really facilitated her studies on airway contractility and pharmacological delivery. So with that, um, Dr. Urso, I would love to hand it over to you and everybody welcome. Please feel free to also enter any comments or questions in the chat box and we'll have a short Q&A session at the end. Awesome. Thank you very much, Abby. Um, good morning, everyone. Uh, so as Abby was mentioning, uh, my name is Andrea Carola Urso and I will be speaking to you about some of my experience with precisionary instruments and PCLS for um, uh, the study of fibrotic lung disease. Um, so just as an introduction of what the research interests in our lab are, um, we're interested in different phases, let's call them this way, of lung disease, treatment, transplantation, and prevention. Um, and by treatment, we mean non-invasive um, drug delivery, um, repair of unsuitable organs for transplantation, and um, targets to prevent rejection. So now for this presentation, um, I will focus on the areas uh, in which we actually use precision cut lung slices for our uh, scopes, which are essentially phase one and phase three, treatment and prevention. So what uh, our general question was, um, was about is that essentially gastroesophageal reflux aspiration, which is a very common in patients with lung disease due to um, changes in lung volumes, the changes that they experience in of intrathoracic pressure and diaphragmatic pressure, which uh, essentially allow the diaphragm to relax. So a lot of these patients experience before and after transplant um, so like gastroesophageal aspiration. And so uh, obviously in our treatment study, we're looking at uh, gastroesophageal reflux aspiration in uh, patients with fibrotic lung disease or obstructive lung disease um, as the um, entrance of uh, the transit of this reflux within the airways causes a disruption in pulmonary epithelium and uh, obviously a disruption, a general disruption, a general injury, which stimulates increase in fibrosis and, de and decreases lung function, um, along with uh, worsening the very well-known um, uh, lung infection, pulmonary infections experienced by these patients. So our first scope was to figure out how to treat um, these patients that have already a uh, huge difficulty with um, drug assumption. Uh, a lot of drugs are systemic and very toxic and um, aerosolized drugs are not as efficient as we would hope them to be. So we um, decided to use PCLS to try to deliver gold nanoparticles um, to uh, these lysis to see if they would uh, be able to uptake them. So as a different um, method of drug delivery. And I'll go over, over it later. And then for the prevention uh, aspect, um, very similar. Uh, gastroesophageal reflux aspiration happens after transplantation where we have an organ that is immunologically compromised and um, 
it is really important to maintain its integrity at that moment. Um, and we know that uh, the components, among a lot of the components of gastroesophageal reflux, like pancreatic enzymes, proteases, um, uh, gastric juices, we've not, we have not been able to identify um, the injurious molecules capable of destroying the epithelium and um, promoting rejection in lung transplant patients. And a lot of our studies in our lab have been focused on bile acids specifically that are um, basically uh, steroidal emulsifiers that are derived from cholesterol. And their role biologically is to um, disrupt membranes and uh, uh, they aid in the digestions of fats. So when it comes to cell membranes, obviously um, bile acids um, are disruptive. And if since they've also been studied heavily in uh, the gut where a dysfunction in production or reassumption of, or sorry, um, uh, recycling of these bile acids causes inflammation in the lung upon aspiration, it would be uh, worse, especially in transplant patients. So our studies have generally focused on this aspect of, um, of lung disease. And I will go over um, a few uh, slides about, first of all, how, since this is all geared towards the application of PCLS, I just want it to be um, I wanted to give you context, but also be very um, narrow in what I'm trying to, to communicate. So I'll go over the technique of preparation of murine and human PCLS and uh, our two uses, essentially, in our treatment uh, study. So PCLS in gold nanoparticle mediated drug delivery. And I'll talk to you about um, PCLS in airway contractility and transcriptomics. So essentially looking at how we can study airway mechanics with precision cut lock devices ex vivo. So when it comes to the preparation, I know that uh, human lung slices are especially difficult to prepare. I've had a lot of experience with it um, and uh, a lot of trials. So um, in my experience, I've mainly worked with um, lungs from patients with um, IPF, uh, ILD, and um, and you know, emphysema mostly. So when it comes to organ quality, I think that is incredibly important because this is a very laborious pro uh, process that takes several days and um, a lot of resources. So when it comes to organ quality, I have noticed that the best use um, is between four to eight hours on ice after um, removal. Um, it is always helpful to have airway cuffs for cannulation. Obviously that's generally very hard because um, these lungs are uh, most of the time extracted from patients that are getting transplanted. So they need as much airway, as much, you know, their own cuff on the other end as they can. Um, and um, I have noticed that the organ quality obviously uh, varies a lot between the different diseases that we're looking at when it comes to fibrotic versus um, fibrotic lungs versus lungs with emphysema, um, which are incredibly hard to, um, to slice. So fibrotic lungs actually um, may give you a much better outcome when it comes to the thickness of the slice and um, depending on how many cells you want um, within the slice itself? What are you trying to simulate? Um, but in emphysema, that's very hard because a lot of the time when you're trying to inflate these lungs, um, the, ag uh, the agar that you're uh, pushing in ends up filling up huge pockets that uh, won't allow you to, to basically see anything um, upon whichever, obviously, uh, microscopy, whatever you're doing. Uh, with your research. So um, I have a picture here of a, um, of a lung. And this is what I was talking about when it comes to like the cuff of the airway. A lot of the times you just have to like dig around it and expose the airway in order to cannulate. Um, the, um, the, ten the cannulation I think is uh, much more 
efficient when it's targeted. A lot of people like to um, deliver the agar to the entire lung. Um, lobe cannulation is more efficient, in my opinion, uh, because it allows you to first off handle the, the smaller piece of tissue and also um, be able to fully inflate it. Um, so the preparation and cutting conditions that I am talking about here um, are performed at 37 degrees Celsius. So after you have the lungs on ice overnight or whenever you receive them between the four and 16 hours, which is the best window, um, the lung has to be warmed at 37 degrees in, an, um, in a bath of HBSS, saline, whichever, um, in order to receive the agar that will be pushed in obviously as a fluid <clears throat> and not have it um, solidify immediately. So this is a huge challenge for a lot of groups that I've spoken to. So I use 2% <clears throat> agar around 40 to 42 degrees Celsius in temperature. I try to keep it um, as close to 37 as I can, but I know that it, um, it will solidify very quickly. So the inflation is at positive pressure. You keep the lung in the organ bath, uh, possibly if you can on um, like a hot plate at 37, always keep keeping the um, uh, a thermometer in um, because we definitely don't wanna cook it. Um, and, uh, you know, you push the agar in depending on which lobe, uh, the size, the amount, the liters of agar change. Um, but say for um, a lower lobe, I would use, I think, uh, about a liter tops um, of agar. Obviously, there's a lot of waste. You have to keep in mind that there's a lot of waste and you don't want to find yourself without um, <clears throat> enough product uh, and leave pockets of air. So the slicing, I've actually used several of the precisionary instruments machines. I've used um, the VF300, the VF201, and the VF501, and I own the VF201 at the moment. Um, here is a picture of what I believe to be the VF501. Um, <clears throat> if Abby can correct me, I don't remember exactly which one is which, but uh, this is essentially what uh, what this looks like. So the the human uh, you have to obviously um, two different ways of preparing the uh, tissue cubes for the slicing. For the murin is really easy. It's just essentially cubing whichever part of the lung you're interested in and. Uh, mouse lungs slice beautifully if they're well inflated and you can go as low as 20 uh, micrometers if you wish, uh, if it's well inflated. Uh, but for human slices, um, so they're embedded in 2% agar. Um, and what you would do is essentially fix them at the bottom of the tube that allows you to then push it through, push the um, the, uh, the cube through to get sliced. So uh, some agar is put at the bottom of the tube. The cube is attached, put on ice so that the agar solidifies and it won't move because a lot of the issue is the cube, the tissue cube essentially just slicing away and like coming out of the tube. And then filling the rest of the space with agar and waiting for it to solidify. So for um, fibrotic lungs, IPF, CF, um, I'm just saying the ones that I've had um, experience with, um, I could go as low as 100 micrometers, uh, sometimes 80, but those have been maybe three times. So I didn't even list it here. I was very lucky. Um, but with good inflation, you are able to, to do that. And one very important detail of good inflation is utilizing your hands within the organ bath to massage the agar to basically push through until obviously I was interested in smaller airways but to push the agar all throughout the tissue and that really helps with uh, the distribution of the agar and the um, 
the integrity of the lung slices. For emphysema, it, as I was saying before, it's already extremely tough to, uh, to cut uh, these kinds of lungs. Um, so I, if you have limited tissue, I am of the opinion that you should go between 150 and 180 micrometers. Otherwise you will get, the tissue will get destroyed and will get cut in uh, a way that is not uh, recoverable. Uh, after this, I, uh, for every experiment that I will you know, show you and that I'll present, the PCLS were incubated at 37 um, in, you know, whichever media you're interested in, depends on the cells you're interested in, I DMEM overnight, um, and then use the following day. So we also, I've also kept these slices um, and did a... Uh, kind of viability, quote unquote, curve, um, and they've been viable, viable for a week. Obviously, they're not as well performing as if you use them the next day, but they can be viable for a week. Um, and the viability largely depends on the thickness of the slice, as you can imagine, because uh, that will that will impact how many cells will die, obviously. So uh, I think that for murine lungs a week a week would be relatively um doable for human lungs i would use fresh they're already hard enough to prepare um so i have a little video i would have to exit from this presentation really quickly i might do it at the end maybe it's uh, disruptive um to show you like the slicing what i'm sure you're familiar with but it was just like a fun addition yeah, Dr. Urso, if you yes. wanted to um, go ahead and give that a try, I think that that'll okay. be really exciting. Yeah, for sure. Um, uh, let me stop share. Um, let me see if I can. There it is. Can you guys see it? Yes. All right. So as you can see, it's slicing through the cube. Um, and uh, the little slice essentially uh, floats away. I'm just gonna go again. Um, it floats away. If it's uh, properly inflated, it will not stay within the agar. It's just going to move away. These are mouse lungs, as you can tell from the shape, um, but it's very easy to get good quality product with good inflation. And pushing through, um, the agar in a way that is too disruptive to the tissue, especially these tissues that are already friable as they are, um, may cause uh, may cause problems. So that's why I'm insisting on the good inflation. I'm just gonna go back to the presentation. Okay. So <clears throat> I'm gonna show you some a uh, few figures from our. Uh, paper in nanomedicine, uh, where we're looking at fibroblasts in PCLS and how they would uptake uh, targeted gold nanoparticles. Obviously, it's um, models of fibrosis are challenging to obtain, to say the least. So having PCLS from fibrotic human lungs is a huge, uh, huge resource in order to test these kinds of uh, drug delivery um, approaches. So here, what we've done is essentially used gold nanoparticles and uh, targeted gold, gold nanoparticles that are um, meant to uh, be uptaken by fibroblasts um, and to deliver drug. These slides don't show any drug delivery, but this is just to have you see the, um, you know, the, the application of PCLS in this case. So here we have, um, coated and non-coated nanoparticles with the antibody for um, like the CD44 for fibroblasts. And you can see the uh, colocalization of our Alexa um, uh, fluorophore with the nuclei of specific fibroblasts. So you can really use these uh, slices for, uh, you know, to simulate obviously ex vivo, 
um, uptake of drugs or, or particles or any substrate proteins. Um, I have many colleagues that are actually, I'm collaborating with that are interested in protein delivery um, to precision cut lung slices. And they're very responsive. And because they last so long in uh, culture, here I'm just showing a 24 hour treatment. And this is after obviously 20, like the overnight <clears throat> incubation in media. Um, so they, they would last as long as a week. So you can also see the, um, uh, the viability of the cells of interest and what happens within them for a week. Um, I've also used PCLS for uh, transmission electron microscopy. Um, obviously, these, lies, these lices would be five microns or less. Um, but they were performed from PCLS. So I always save PCLS uh, in um, OCT. Uh, I save as much as I can, or even fresh, uh, I can send them out. And um, it's handy because you can have your sample, you can, as you, as you shave away and slice away, you can save some of these samples uh, for future use. And they look at the integrity of the tissue, like the, the uh, organelles and the, the integrity of the cell is stunning, in my opinion. Um, you can see the little nanoparticles here and there within the fibroblast. Um, and so this can come handy for uh, you know, future studies or reviewer requests. Um, so this is just a zoomed in uh, little picture of uh, the nanoparticles within the cell. Uh, and we also looked at macrophages, this is macrophage uptake, and uh, you know, you can see the nanoparticles in super clearly. And mind you, these are um, nanoparticles are very extremely, extremely uh, small, about eight nanometers. So uh, you know, the the integrity of the tissue like seeing these depends a lot on the integrity of the tissue. Um, then the other study that I wanted to talk about, which is maybe um, a little more geared towards ex vivo, uh, pure ex vivo research is uh, response to substrate uh, superfusion. So, um, Another one of our papers, we were looking at, as I was mentioning before, bile acid aspiration. And so how does, um, bio, how do bile acids besides uh, acting on cellular membranes and disrupting the membranes, how do they impact, do they impact um, airway contractility? And using PCLS was a great, great tool. Um, and what we did was uh, utilizing face uh, contrast microscopy with a perfusion system of various solutions of bile acids, which can be obviously anything. We did it with many more things, but <clears throat> in order to then um, uh, mount the precision cut lungs lice on a chamber that would allow for constant superfusion of uh, fluid and then recording, live recording of the airway through a camera. So I will show you the human airway first. So this is a human airway from uh, an IPF patient. And I have a little video to go along with it. Um, but just to give you the introduction of what you're about to see. So what we were hypothesizing was that um, uh, bile acids impact airway contractility um, by relaxing airways. So we would um, contract airways with acetylcholine and then administer along with the acetylcholine a bile acid to then see airway relaxation. Um, so this is essentially, these are the pictures of what you're going to see in the video. I'll play it right now. So as you can see, beautiful uh, cilia moving, which I don't know, is to me incredibly exciting to watch. Um, but you see the airway contracting and then relaxing upon the addition of the bile acid and um, the removal of the acetylcholine. I'm just going to go again. 
So acetylcholine, the airway contracts, the bile acid relaxes it, and then um, it relaxes upon the, um, the acetylcholine removal. So, you know, this is uh, a lot of studies on cilia uh, motility uh, can be done on precision cut lung slices, which is something that we were also looking into. Um, as you can see, the, the, the movement of the cilia, the integrity of the smooth muscle is astounding. And this is in human PCLS, which are incredibly, incredibly tough to make. Now I'm going to show you the beautiful uh, video of mouse lung slices, which are just perfectly round and wonderful to produce, super quick to produce. The same, um, the same principle here, the contraction of the airway with acetylcholine and the relaxation with uh, bile acid. So you can see in the video, the, the, this bile acids alone doesn't do anything. And then um, the contraction, it's beautiful. Um, and then relaxation and contraction again, a little bit, and then uh, release. So very interactive. I'm just gonna play it again to show the movement of the cilia. You can see it um, a little less here uh, than in the lung, the human lung, which is uh, kind of surprising, but to us it was surprising since this, these are so hard to produce. But um, you know, you can you can really do a lot of studies on air, air, air mechanics, um, and to be completely honest, also vasculature mechanics uh, with precision cut lung slices. But my experience has been on airway alone. Uh, so the key concepts of this presentation are essentially that uh, human PCLS can be prepared from a variety of diseased tissues. Um, there is way more to say than I'm saying right now, obviously, and I'd be happy to, uh, to talk more about it for anyone who has any questions. And that um, PCLS viability producing precision cut lung slices allows for ex vivo studies of many sorts, um, in my experience has been on substrate uptake and airway mechanics. So if you have any questions, I'd be happy to take any. Um, there's my contact below. If uh, you, know, you have any follow-up questions that you'd like to ask, and I'd be happy to respond. Wonderful. Oh my gosh, Dr. Ursula, thank you so much. And I really like the, the videos that you show, both of cutting and of the contractility and relaxation. So I want to definitely open up the floor if any of our attendees have questions. Um, I think a lot of our interested people are actually at ATF. Um, and we're going to try to broadcast your recorded uh, um, a webinar, actually, while we're here. Um, so um, anybody, if you are um, uh, have a question, please feel free to unmute yourself and ask. Don't be shy. If not, we can also wrap up early. And Dr. Ursula, I hope you'll be okay. We have additional questions that come up later that we can email them to you and get your expert input. Absolutely, the email is right here. If anyone, you know, even if you don't have questions right now and you run into issues or questions later, be feel free to reach out. I know it's a very challenging uh, endeavor, especially when you do it alone. So uh, I'd be more than happy. And I obviously shared limited information. I didn't know how much time I would have. So um, there's way more to say about preparation and uh, the protocol for precision cut lung slices. So I'd be happy to take any questions even in the future. Excellent. Thank you so much. And thank you everybody else for attending.